This is the uh, Michelson interferometer demo. It's currently believed that light undergoes constructive and destructive interference. Here's one of my proofs that light can have collisions, bounce apart, redirecting their paths from the dark fringe areas into the bright fringe areas, resulting in an intensity of nearly four times greater than any single path. This indicates the words constructive and destructive uh, are misused with light and only applies to water ripple tanks, which only doubles in height. Also considered that in a ripple tank, the water only undulates up and down. The water does not move forward like that of a shoreline ocean wave. Light, like radio waves, propagate. This is an essential difference. <clears throat> when two water waves form a composite wave, the composite wave is the algebraic sum of the two original waves. The lower wave is the sum of adding the two top waves. The amount of energy of a water wave is equal to the weight of the water in the wave. The area under the curve is the energy. So that's what we have here. You got one wave, two, and they add together, and you get a double height wave. Okay, this is the Michelson interferometer. I'm going to demonstrate here. Uh, we've got the laser beam. We have a la the lens. Oops, I'm bumping it. Beam splitter, one, mirror one, and mirror two. Okay, it's normal for the, okay, instead of using a uh, second beam splitter for the second screen, there is a second screen, no one shows the second screen, but it should be on there. And what it is, uh, it's right here. That's the second screen, and it's located just uh, the laser, the light goes through the pinhole, or through the hole, and then it's normal for the light to hit the mirror, both mirrors, and reflect back. The, uh, the, uh, if you look at the mirrors, that's what's going to happen. The light's going to end up going back to the source. Okay, This is normal for the light to go back to the source. However, what is unusual at the second screen is that the fringes are the reverse or negative of the main screen. So right here I have the main screen, that's the main screen, and over here I have the second screen. That, if you look closely, the, the images are reversed. Now I'll try to get a black spot in the center, that's, that's about as dark as it's going to get. Okay, and I have a bright spot in the center, over here. So they're reversed. Okay, when the interferometer is critically aligned with only one circular spot appearing at the main screen as found in the MIT video, where did the light go? Here's the reference for it. I'm going to insert the video in here now. The left on the screen then is associated with the light that's returning to the source. The spot on the right is the spot that we looked at before. That's the one that's coming through this lens. And then we've added... Uh... Okay, in the MIT video's case, the photons have hit absolutely directly head-on. Only in this case, all the light has managed to bounce directly back to the source, and the main output screen becomes totally dark. This proves there are collisions in effect. This only occurs with absolute precise alignment, which I am unable to attain here. So you have to watch the MI2 video. MIT video. <clears throat> okay, you have to be careful about what you talk about here. The fringes at the output screen are still four times greater than either leg of the split beam. The second screen is not where the destructive light is going until screen one blanks out, goes totally dark. Originally I stated that the second screen was the destructive light from the main screen. 
this is an air. The second screen is totally separate screen, except that the fringes are negative of screen one. In my setup, which is the norm for most experiments, you simply to count fringes, the light is still colliding. Here's, in this case, the light is bouncing from the dark fringe into the bright fringe areas. This results in an intensity that is nearly four times greater than a single leg's intensity. I assume the light bounces from the inner rings to the outer. The equation for intensity for light in interference is this. I max equals I1 plus I2 times 2 times I to the half times I2 times the half. Anyway, so relating light interference to the waves found in a water ripple tank is dead long. Okay, if you solve this equation, you're going to get for if you put one in for the intensity, you're going to get four out, but it never quite gets to four. Okay. Another way for some people to get fooled is, uh, well, relating light interference to the waves found in a water ripple tank is dead wrong. The amplitude of a water wave only doubles. Another way to get fooled, if you've not solved the equation above, and the human eye errantly assumes the light which is doubling light is like that of water waves. See be below, okay. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, put a card in here to uh, split the beam in half. Where am I? Okay, I'm, putting a, I'm splitting the beam in half, blocking out half of it without messing it. Okay, that's the intensity. <clears throat> when you look at this intensity, the part that's blocked off is only one, is only one leg of the interferometer. So that's intensity number one. If you look at the other intensity of the fringes, that's four times greater. But if your eye is fooled, it only looks twice as bright. And here's the reason why. So this has fooled a lot of people. Okay. Okay, if, if you've not solved the equation above, the human eye errantly assumes that light is doubling like that of water waves. Okay, here we see the human eye is unable to resolve light intensity. Here's the uh, reference for it. I'll put this in, the, in my paper. The human eye perception of light intensity is law... It's actually, originally it was logarithmic, the Weber-Fetchner law, but the upgrade is the Stevens power laws. And it's similar to hearing the human here, which uses the decimal unit, it's logarithmic. Okay, so if one looks at the intensity of the fringes by eye, it only looks twice as bright. Actually, it's much greater than the human eye has perceived. This is a common error and probably fooled even Newton, which should be capitalized, as the, as the men at the time had no way to measure intensity except for their human eye. Okay, lumens and watts are proportional, meaning if you double one unit, the others double as well. One lumen equals one over 683 watts. So unlike water, in the case of light, the, the energy of the fringes has nearly quadrupled. So here we see that a water ripple tank does not represent light inference. They are different and only cause confusion. The air began over 200 years ago and is still carried on today. This applies to the central edges of the double slit light intensity as well, except the cosine angle is required then, however. Okay, so the conclusion is the interference of light is not from the addition of waves. There are several more experiments and proofs I've outlined on my web page theory, uh, even stronger than this. Thank you. I want to add something to this video. I was going to double check the intensity increase, 
then my laser power supply went out. Even if it's not quadrupling, the light is still bouncing back to the source. Currently, there's no way to get a force out of free out of a free space electromagnetic wave, because it's believed that they only only pass through one another unaffected, so they cannot transfer a force. This is why there's no force in the general theory of gravity, and why the mechanism of magnetism has never fully been explained. By the way. Mathematical terms can be added to Newton's gravity theory, which has a force to allow for the bending of light. It's because, and that was a great proof of Einstein's theory, is because of the misconception in the double interference experiment and because water waves are used to describe light. Further, all the electromagnetic waves are photons, radio, microwaves. If one looks into microwave theory, you'll find that microwaves can be forced to collide and may cancel out when sent down a waveguide where the waves bounce back. Also microwaves, like light, can be polarized. The collision concept can enable, or this collision concept can enable an electromagnetic wave to transmit a force but only with certain configurations and attributes which I will cover. There are several more expansion improvements, uh, proofs that I have outlined on my web page theory, several stronger than this. Look and see what happens to the foundation of physics of photons of light bounce and redirect. More details at synoticgravity.com. This is the source of duality and the funny concept of Schrodinger's cat, whether it's dead or alive. Thank you.